This morning we're on our way to Tsukiji Fish Market. Phil's very excited for his sushi breakfast. Tsukiji Fish Market is a really popular place to go in Tokyo. Even though the inner market's now moved to Toyosu, the outer market's still there and it's thriving, possibly now more than ever. Today, we're gonna to have a look around at what's there, what there is to eat, both fish and other options besides seafood. And if you're planning a trip to Japan, my guidebook has lots of ideas for things to do and help with planning your trip. You can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk with worldwide shipping. So the inner market at Tsukiji has now moved to Toyosu. That was the business wholesale fish market with the famous tuna auction. But the outer market is still there where it's always been. That part has restaurants and prepared fish that you can eat right there. Over time, it's now evolved to become more of a Japanese street food destination with lots of different options. There are several stations close to Tsukiji, Tsukiji Station, Tsukiji Shijo, and it's only a 10 minute walk from Shintomicho Station and Higashi Ginza Station. So there's lots of options depending on which line is the most convenient for you. As it was a nice morning, we walked there from Ginza. It's always a good way to see more of what's on the streets, if your feet can take it. The opening hours vary for each individual store. I'd recommend going in the morning to get the largest choice because some close mid or early afternoon. You don't have to go at the crack of dawn. I arrived at about 9 or 9.30 a.m. But if you do have jet lag and wake up early, this is a good thing to do because many places are open early. Some stores are closed on Sundays and Wednesdays and holidays because that's when Toyosu markets closed and that's where they get their fresh fish. On the way, right next to Tsukiji, we spotted Tsukiji Honganji Temple. You'd never know it was a temple or shrine because it looks so different from other ones. It looks a lot more European in a way. The design was actually inspired by temples in India. It was rebuilt in this style in the 1930s after it was destroyed in the Great Kanto earthquake. It looks very different to most Japanese temples. It also has a pipe organ inside, which is also very unusual. There's the start of the market. You can tell already from the signs, it's starting to look like a fish market. The market takes up several blocks. The layout's like a grid of streets with some very narrow alleyways and some even more narrow alleyways going into buildings. There's also some indoor market sections to explore. Rather than trying to visit specific places, the best way is to just wander around and see what you come across. I found some amazake. This is something I was looking for I, because I'd heard of it, but I had no idea of what it tastes like. It's made in a similar way to how they make sake, but it's not alcoholic. And it's a warm drink that's kind of a white and milky sort of rice drink. To make it, he mixed a paste with some hot water and warmed it up. It smells weird. It smells a bit sort of malty, I want to say. But it's sweeter than I was expecting. The smell doesn't smell like it's sweet at all, but it does taste sweet. I can see how it's got a similar sort of sake-ish taste. That's really weird. It's not like anything in particular. <laughs> and it's got bits in like sort of grains. Amazake is a very healthy fermented drink. The grains are a bit like in brown bread, although it's made of rice. I really couldn't think of anything that it's similar to to give you an idea of the taste, but I would recommend you try it if you get the chance. We just had a delicious pizza at Pepper's Cafe, which is a little cafe kind of hidden away down this back street that specializes in just lots of things with pepper. They've got pizza and sandwiches, and they've got a really good drink selection as well, alcoholic drinks and coffees. We had a delicious lemonade. They even um, ground pepper on top of the lemonade and it tasted so good. Really delicious pizza. I think she was cooking it um, with a blowtorch, wasn't she, Phil? Yeah, yeah, she cooked it, um, she prepared it all fresh, obviously, and then cooked it with a blowtorch and it's a very small place. Mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't Amazing. Pizza, but yeah, it was absolutely delicious. The dough was really nice and soft. Um, the flavour was great. Yeah, you might think, why did you come to a fish market and have some pizza? But it was really delicious. Mm. <laughs> and not heavy at all. Like, it was quite, we shared one and it was kind of what, a small pizza. Mm. Um, yeah, just really nice. Yeah, really good quality. The owner has a company importing peppers from around the world and he gave us some to try just on their own. And they tasted nothing like regular ground pepper. It had so much more flavour. So we bought a pack to take home. It was so good. Here's where to find it. You have to go down this alleyway here. You could miss that so easily. 
These really long queue of people are all queuing up for Tamagoyaki, such a popular store. There seemed to be a few stalls that have become famous that everyone was queuing up for. There were some very long queues. However, I've found the standard of food to be excellent across the board in Japan, so you really don't need to go to a famous or well-known place to find something good to eat. This place is also really popular, they're selling tuna bowls. A lot of people waiting outside. It looks like it's so busy they told people to stop lining up. It's also pretty crowded, these alleyways are quite small. I don't know if it's a particularly busy day today, but there's a lot of people here. From what I've heard, Tsukiji is always very busy now. Even since 2019, it seems more crowded now because it's become such a popular place to visit. And this was on a weekday at the end of February, which isn't even peak season for visiting Japan. There might be fewer people if you go earlier in the morning. Lots of people know the famous markets in Japan, Tsukiji and Nishiki Market in Kyoto, but there are actually hundreds of fish markets and morning markets all around Japan. So if you're going to another town, especially if it's near the coast, it's always worth checking if there's a local market. In my experience, they're often a good place to visit for delicious food, especially kaisendon, seafood rice bowls. And even if you don't eat fish like me, you can still enjoy them. Take a look at my videos of the markets in Hakodate, which was a real experience in the winter, and Sapporo in my Hokkaido playlist. There's another indoor section here. There's actually loads more than I expected at Tsukiji. Just right for Tsukiji market, shark cat. This is an ebi senbei, a shrimp cracker, which is pressed completely flat to make it really thin and crispy. To give you an idea of prices, these rice bowls are between 1400 and 4100 yen. If you don't like seafood, there is of course ice cream and strawberries, including candy strawberries and traditional strawberry daifuku. It's mochi, that's chewy rice cake, filled with sweet red bean paste and a strawberry on top. I've got a strawberry daifuku, it's quite a traditional sweet. I went for a traditional flavour. It's um, tubermen, which is chunky red bean paste. They had quite a lot of different flavours, they all look good actually. Strawberry is full of flavour, unlike strawberries most of the time. <laughs> which tastes of nothing out of season, it's really nice. And the mochi is really soft, often when you buy them in packs, um, like if you buy them online or something, they're a bit dry and chewy. It's definitely a lot more soft, a lot better texture, very nice. Watch out for the powdered sugar. What have you got here? I just got some uh, wild tuna. It's felt like we've come here, I ought to get some fish. And there's some of the places that got huge queues, but this place um, just had some of these out on the counter. You just grab it straight away. It's pretty nice. Um, I don't think it's like top quality. But I paid 700 yen for this, mm -hmm. which, you know, I've seen some sashimi for 2,000 yen for a lot less. So I think it's probably a fair price what it is. Based on. There's actually so much more here than I expected. The layout of the streets is like a grid, but then as you're walking along, you look to the side and there's a tiny little alleyway with a load more places. And I can't believe how popular some of them are. They have such long queues. They must be places that people have heard about online and decided it's worth queuing up for you know, maybe half an hour to get into. And it's not just fish stores. We've had hardly any fish, actually. There's a lot of places with fresh fish and places that cook it up or have sashimi bowls that you can eat straight Straight away. There's also a few fruit and veg stands, other sorts of snacks, there's some crockets, some fish cakes, there's stores selling things like dried seaweed and other pickles and a lot of things that you're not quite sure what they are. There are also a few shops selling kitchenware. This one has shark skin graters for wasabi. If you like this sort of thing, I'd recommend visiting Kapabashi. You can walk there from the famous temple in Asakusa. There are so many shops selling kitchenware and tableware. Even if you're not that into cooking, it's really interesting to look around. There's a video about it on my channel. This is the place Phil went to when he came here before. He had this sushi set. It's actually closed at the moment, but it's more of a restaurant where you can sit down and eat. This is Yonemoto Coffee, which John Lennon always came to when he was in Tokyo. On this trip, Phil was on a quest to try Wagyu beef. 
We didn't really expect it to be the best here in Tsukiji Market, but decided to give it a try anyway. Phil tried a Wagyu beef skewer. It was uh, the first time I've ever had that. It's supposed to be the A5 rump part of it, so I paid two and a half thousand yen for that. And it's the first time I've ever had Wagyu, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Well, it's the first time I've ever had Wagyu A5 at least. And it has got it's like really moist, it has got that melt in your mouth flavour. It's strange, like when I first bit into it, I thought, mm, it's just great, but then the aftertaste, it really stays with you, and I could definitely eat a lot more of that. So yeah, that was really nice. And we found that from a place that had no queue, weirdly. Um, whereas another place around the corner had a massive queue. I don't know if there's a different inequality, but that was pretty decent. The quest for Wagyu beef will continue in Kobe, of course, and Kyoto. Subscribe to catch that in my videos. We've actually spent longer than I expected going around Tsukiji because there's so much here. It's a Monday morning and I'm really surprised how busy it is. There's a lot of tourists here mainly by the looks of it. But it's a good place to go around and just try lots of little bits from different places. Probably more so than having a whole rice bowl meal in one place, then you can try more stuff. I did also notice there's quite a few branches of sushi zanmai around here, which is a sushi chain in Japan. And I think it's supposed to be quite good, but you can try that anywhere. You don't have to come to Tsukiji for that. We're not here particularly early. We arrived at about half nine and um, it's about maybe about half 11 now. And there's still loads of people here and everything's open. So you don't have to get up right at dawn to get anything here unless there's somewhere you really want to go oh yeah because <laughs> uh, there were a couple of places with signs saying only 20 servings per day i think it was tuna cheeks or something only 20 servings so you need to get here early if you want something like that or if you want to go to one of the really popular places because some of those queues were long there's a few restaurants around here that are really limited as well i think you know you have to get here at five in the morning if you want to get in we'd have no chance of doing that Overall, I did enjoy going around Tsukiji, but be prepared that it is crowded. As I mentioned, I would recommend visiting fish markets or morning markets in other towns around Japan for fresh food with a calmer experience. And if you like street food, try and go to a festival, a matsuri. They often have lots of excellent food stalls. That's one of the best things about them. I've got lots more coming up from Japan, so I'll see you soon on Thursday.